My name is Jason Miller, founder of Aspen Now Solutions, and we're about to unlock the power of ServiceNow. I'd like to start off by thanking all 2,154 subscribers in over 80 countries globally. If you believe in transferring knowledge to those who need it most, please click subscribe. Your user data will not be transferred to anyone outside of Aspen Now without your express consent. Okay, so today I'd like to start off by uh, noting one video by a new guest star named Karthik uh, on the channel here. So we have a ServiceNow video on how to create a custom data lookup in London. Uh, one thing I love about this solution is that it is totally code free, so there's no scripting involved. Karthik did a, uh, a wonderful job pre presenting this topic, so uh, kudos to him. All right, so today what we're going to do is we're going to add choices uh, to this field here called pending state, but we're working in a domain separated environment. So you'll probably, this is a continuation of uh, the do domain separation uh, series that I've started. Look here and we'll see our domain picker. And I reviewed, I, I think the video was like 45 minutes or something like that. And I thought, wow, it's kind of long, but then I thought about it and came to the conclusion that I could probably talk for, I don't know, maybe like 10 days straight on domain set because there really is a lot to grasp. So um, there will be a couple of these videos and I'll try to divide it up um, into nice digestible chunks of information for you. So we'll see here, here's our domain picker and you'll probably recall the last time it looked like a list um, now we have it uh, like a searchable list and one way to do that is to go to the system properties and I'll, I'll show you in a second the, um, the property that I enabled to make it appear this way and um, we'll see here here's our top domain and what this little arrow does um, and we'll see here our form changes a little bit I want to click on the arrow it'll take me back to global so remember I say, stated in the previous video that there are certain things that you can only do in global so let's make sure we understand that. Okay, so we have our pending state here, and it looks like we have a couple of choices, awaiting delivery, awaiting vendor. Um, and uh, here's our domain map. So we'll see here we have top. We'll notice here that global is not visible on our map. So I just want you to take note of that. But if I were to put it anywhere, I would say it's kind of like above top, but not really at the same time. So one thing you'll learn is that um, especially when you're working on multiple screens, you really need to be cognizant of, of uh, what's going on with your domain picker. Um, because right now you'll see here I'm in global, but here I'm in top. So wherever I changed it last, it's really going to take precedence. So if I refresh the screen, we'll see globals right here, right? So uh, let's go over to our sysprops. I just want to show you how I did the picker. Um, it's this glide UI domain reference picker enabled, and I set it to true. And um, you'll see here there's like, you know, a little bit under 30 um, sysprops for domain sep. Um, so there's uh, a little bit here going on. So you don't need to know each and every one of them. In fact, you should probably not mess with them unless you're like the lead developer um, in your organization. All right. So then let's get to our choices. So um, we'll take a look at the choice list. So if we were to come into... Um, our choice list here. We saw there were two states, so it looks like we have one going on. Well, let's see here, expand. So it looks like we have a waiting delivery. And let's go ahead and reload this form. So it looks like we have a waiting delivery here, but it looks like we have another one called a waiting vendor. So we'll see where that one um, is coming from there. We'll try to find that also. So we'll see here. Aha, that's our it's our filtering that's doing this, right? So really what we want is we want to filter on the elements. So I'm going to get rid of this. I'm going to do show matching. All right, let me get the, rid of that one condition here. And now let's run it. All right, so now we'll see we have two in global. Um, I think I created one yesterday. That's right. So we have a waiting delivery and a waiting vendor in our global domain. So let's say we want to add some other choices here. Now there's two ways to do it. Um, and one thing that we need to be cognizant of is this domain field here, right? So actually there's probably three, more than two ways to do it, but you can try to 
um, create these like by clicking new, but let's say you had like 50 of these things to add. So you're probably going to want to open up. Um, I don't know. I use Google sheets or Google docs, whatever. Um, but you'll probably, you might do this in Excel too. So we'll see here. We have awaiting delivery shipment customer. Um, I might even put in, uh, something different. I just want a different label on this. So instead of awaiting delivery, uh, I'm going to call this, um, let's see here. Uh, actually, you know what I want to say? Instead of delivery, I want to say shipment. How about that? All right. Or actually shipped. Let's do that. Yeah, let's do shipped. Perfect. So now we got three here. We'll see here. We want to put them in three different domains. Now, there is a little bit of an issue that I've discovered with trying to do it this way. So I'm just going to download this to Excel. Um, then we'll have that. And then we're going to go back to our choice list. Now, I could click on one of these hamburgers here and then go into import. I'm going to uncheck this box, right? I don't need a template because basically I, I kind of cheat a little bit. I already pulled down um, all the fields from the choice list and I just modified it. So let's take the latest one. Let's upload it. And now we're going to see at least one error pop up. Um, it's going to tell me like, hey, I can't find the domains. And I think also it won't find that table field. So let's see what it says. Yeah, see here, table and domain. So it looks like here um, it's kind of a no-go because if I complete the import, <clears throat> what's going to happen is, look, we have table is empty and then we have our domain is global now you see how it did that it just basically said okay you're the user or this admin is in global right now so i want to assign all these to admin so we could use this method if we want to um if we had all the same domain um, i have done that in the past and then i'll just go in and i'll use that like update all functionality um, to go ahead and change the, the table name or even click in here uh, let's see here let's try to get the whole row so I got three there I'll hit enter and then it'll bring up the list so I, I could try to do it that way too um, and then here's the list of all the tables but I'm not gonna do it that way I don't like it so what I'm gonna do is get rid of these let's delete these guys all right and that will all right so one thing before we move on, I just wanted to make sure we understand with our lists, right? Is that when you're in a domain separate environment, you have to remember these three rules. Number one is add the domain field to the list. Number two is don't forget to add the domain field to the list. And number three is always remember to never forget to add the domain field to your list. So kind of driving that point home and why, because this is going to be critical later on for our problem form. So right now we're in global and we don't have any other choices in any other subdomain. So we, we have here pending state. We have two of them. If I go down to, I don't know, like MCT, we'll see if this changes a little bit. And let's take note of this domain field. Now you see here the form changed, right? The domain field moved over here. Why? Because we're in another domain and we caused uh, an override or a break. So, but we'll see here the, the pending state is still the same, right? So global, it's basically saying, okay, there's nothing in a lower level domain or another domain out there. So we're just going to use the global choices. But now what we're going to do is we're going to add other ones to uh, this pending state field in different domains. So let's go ahead and load our, our data here. And I, let's see here. So I'm gonna make Aspen 19. I don't know, I like to put a number in these because it's easier to find later on. A lot of people like to name it the same thing. I just think it causes a little bit of confusion. So I'm gonna choose my file here. Boom, click submit. And then we're going to create our transform app after this uh, finishes running. Okay, let's go to create transform app. Another way to get to transform app 
is just to type in, I think you type in M map. Yeah, there we go right there. So what am I gonna name this? I'm gonna name this like problem choices or something. I'm not gonna run any business rules. And then we're gonna map it to the sys choice table. Yay, all right. So all that, we can save this. And now I'm going to auto map these things. Field maps created. So now I'm just gonna spot check them, table, name. And you'll notice here that on that sys choice table, uh, on the target table, it's actually called name. Um, I've also tried in the Excel spreadsheet changing the target field to name. It was a no-go. So kind of left with one option here. We'll notice here our target field is sysdomain. Um, so just make sure you, you take note of that. And now I think we are ready to do the dance. So I'm going to click on transform. And note that right now I'm in top, uh, at least in this screen, right? So if I go over to our problem form here, I'm just going to do a little refresh. We'll see if I'm still on top. See that I'm not. I'm, I'm actually in global. So again, make sure you're, you're careful here with um, understanding or remembering what domain that you're in. All right, so the transform map has run. That went really quickly. So now I'm just going to go back to the choice list. And I'm just going to click on all. So yeah, sure enough, let's see here. It looks like it, it put it in the right table and it put it in the right domain. And I'm just going to do a show matching here. One other thing too to note is that like this expand domain scope, this is critical. So when you're in global, um, you might need to access some other domains. Um, you'll find that um, I'm going to do a, probably a video on like forms and because um, forms can be a real pain uh, with domain separation. So I'll show you how to um, create overrides and then delete overrides and all that stuff. Because like I was showing there, you there with the, the problem form, it changed as I you know, went into different domains. So going back to our choices here, you know, I'll just click on expand domain scope. It's not going to do anything right now. But we'll see here. Okay, so it looks like Kingfisher has its own. Looks like it has shipped. Top has one. And then MCT has its own. So let's just, let's give it a whirl here. So let's go down to, I don't know, like top or something. And again, <clears throat> actually, let me refresh this first. All right, just to note that we're in global still. Pending stay, we have our two. So let's go to top. I'll give it a second to reload. Pending state. See that? We only have one just awaiting shipment. So global, it's not like, you know, the top domain is going to take a combination of global and top. It's just going to take whatever is in top. So now if we change this to, I don't know, like MCT. All right. We'll see here awaiting customer. So it's a different value, right? And then if we did Kingfisher... Now we'll have a pendant say shipped. Okay, so that, that all lines up there, right? So let's see here. Kingfisher <clears throat> has, let's see here, stems from MCT. So let's say we want Kingfisher to have both awaiting customer and shipped. Um, and we want MCT to have it also. So what we're going to do is we're going to change this domain to MCT. Let's see if I can find it here. Let's see what the nomenclature is. Ah, it just wants to find that. Why? Because I need to expand the scope. Okay. Let's see if we can do it now. Ah, it still doesn't want to do it. doesn't like it. All right. Let's see if we can get in here now. I'll probably have to go into MCT to do this. gonna let me and I just want to find it let's try it like that oh uh, one of the pains of doing domain set uh, all right let's try going into let's refresh this 
Uh, that's why. Okay, so let's go to global now. Let's use a little arrow here. Let's see if that'll let me do it. There we go. All right, see, I wasn't paying attention to what's going on there. So, so now both of these are in top MCT. So now if I'm in Kingfisher, which I am not, because I'm going to have to reload this form. And you're going to spend a lot of your day reloading forms and stuff. So I'm just going to pop this up to global and then bring it back down to MCT. Actually, let's go to Kingfisher. All right, so now you'll see both of them appear here. Awaiting customer and shipped. And then uh, I'll bring it up to global real quick. Looks like a waiting customer and shipped. Uh, actually, I don't think I reloaded all the way. Hold on here. Let's try this again. Waiting delivery. Okay, so there we go. And now we can go to, I don't know, like MCT or something. Yeah, it doesn't look like it's refreshing all the way, I don't think. Uh, okay. Okay, no, actually it did. Okay, so I thought it was going to the top. Silly me. All right, so now let's go on to top. So yeah, waiting shipment. So all this lines up correctly. So if we were to take a look at like our domain map, you know, how does it work? Top has that one, and then we put two in MCT. I mean, originally we had one in Kingfisher and one in MCT, and we saw they were, you know, they, they were distinct values, right? They were... Um, but they didn't go into MCT until we changed, moved this one up essentially to MCT, and then it flowed down to Kingfisher. So, and remember, I think I talked about this in the last video, like sibling domains, and that you have, um, you know, there, there's a way to do the visibility. Uh, you can do it through contains domains um, if you need to, um, or you can just give it to... Um, group or you can give it to users so you can review that that video on your own um, to see how all that works all right so at this point it looks like if, and, and again one thing um, that I'll need to note here is like with your with your dictionary entries right you'll notice that these are not domain separated okay so let's think about this for a second the actual field is not domain separated however the choice values are are domain separated, right? So if we were to go to sys dictionary dot list, and this is a way that you'll be able to figure this out is all you have to do is open up your list columns here. You'll see here we don't have domain. Domain is not present here. So that's how you can tell real quick if a if a table is domain separate or not. And the same thing goes for when you're building custom tables. If you want to be domain separated, you need to add that domain field or you need to extend a table that has domain on it like task. So um, get rid of that, the choice values there. So just to um, you know, drive this point home, all this stuff that shows up here does have the domain column. So this is just a related list going to um, that choice table so if i open this in a new window you see all of them right here okay hopefully i did not confuse you um so if you have any questions uh just go ahead and post a comment on the channel my name is jason miller founder of aspen now solutions and we've just unlocked the power of ServiceNow.